Hey, Titty Gang. What's up, guys? Welcome to the Tits and Talks podcast. My name is Gabby. And I'm Natalie. And we are so excited to have you here with us today as we help you navigate your health journey. Thank you so much for listening, and we hope that you learn something new. Hello, Titty Gang. Hey, guys. We are back with another episode. Woo! <laughs> And today we're getting sciencey or nerdy or I don't know whatever, whatever you want to call it. Um, but yeah, so we are back. Um, we are starting a new series about how to build your perfect program. Um, so today's episode is going to focus primarily on progressive overload. Um, and we just wanted to let you all know that we figured out a filming schedule. So we're going to be re- releasing weekly episodes on Saturdays. So, yay yay us. Uh, (laughs) All right, so Gabby's going to take it away and explain, kind of start out with what (laughs) progressive overload is. Well, I fix my microphone. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, guys, so what is progressive overload? The definition is basically in (laughs) the name, you're progressively (laughs) overloading your body. Wow. And yeah, it's like super simple and everyone complicates it, but it's relative to the type of training that you do. So whether you do um, cardio training, whether you are into CrossFit, whether you are into um, weightlifting, whatever it is, you are progressively either adding weights, adding intensity, adding range of motion um, every single week to your training program. Um, and that basically what is progressive, that's what it is. It's, it's simple. Yeah. If you want the more scientific definition (laughs) to complicate it, or if you are one of those people that do better with like more like information, I guess guess. like more of the explanation, like people that like to read textbooks rather than just have like this short <laughs> snippet notes of it yeah if like you me so <laughs> if you're me and you like uh, the why's behind everything the scientific definition <laughs> of progressive overload is a training stimulus that must disrupt homeostasis in the body in order for adaption adaptation um (laughs) the system adapts over time so the stimulus for disrupting homeostasis must become greater greater over time so simplified what gabby said you're (laughs) overloading progressively yeah and basically like you have to do progressive overload in order to see any progress people will do the same thing over and over they go in the gym every single week they do the same exact weight that you did and you're not seeing progress it's because one of many factors but One of them is like, if you're not getting stronger, you need to progressively overload and do it in the proper way. You can't max out every single time that you're in the gym and expect to get stronger because your body naturally needs that recovery time as well as that overload time. So it's a balance of both of those. But you also can't like change too many variables all at Mm -hmm. once. So like if you really want to focus on strength, then each week the progressive overload that you should be focusing on is increasing your percentage work by like two to 3% each week. Um, and then, you know, next training program cycle, you can intent or you can increase like intensity by mm-hmm. increasing reps at that new found strength that you just finished building, like doing too many variables to change at once can kind of like, you'll still get progress, but. And it can become like overwhelming as well too. Like, yeah. Very fatiguing on the system. And also, I feel like if you just focus on one aspect of progressive overload at a time, you'll get faster results. Kind of like same thing with dieting and stuff. You know, a lot of people are like, I want to build muscle and I want to lose weight and I want to lose fat and all blah, 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 which is great. But at the same time, like you're kind of asking for two different protocols to fit two different goals. Yeah. And not saying that it can't be done, but it's just, it's going to be more efficient if you focus on one thing. So like if you just want to build muscle, you know, then focus on increasing calories and protein. Same thing with, you know, increasing the strength. Mm -hmm. And then once you've built that muscle, you know, then go into like the losing fat um, focus and and stuff like that. So it's, I feel like it's, it's very sexy to like want to. (laughs) It is very sexy. (laughs) It's very sexy to like want to get all these things all at once and super quick. Yeah. And all these ideas are very sexy, but it's not, it's not sexy in the reality of it because all of it is like not true. Yeah, like, (laughs) 
Boom. Hard facts for you. <laughs> From Gabby Sash. <laughs> you can put that on a shirt. It's very sexy, but no. <laughs> oh, jeez. So, I guess, like, Gabby, when since you being, like, power lifter background yeah. and stuff, um, what was your progressive overload kind of training split or focus mm-hmm. for powerlifting and how does that differ from like what you do now or when you did bodybuilding very different from powerlifting um I kind of did blocks so I would start like either at a 50% weight doing like high reps and then the next week it would be like a 60% weight at either the same reps or a little bit lower um, but I would do it in terms of percentages and once I hit that six week mark I would do six week mark did I say mark yeah. mark <laughs> mark <laughs> I can't talk today <laughs> that six week mark um I would do a max and then basically either give yourself a couple weeks to br- rest and then you start another block again so um progressively overloading by percentages um with powerlifting you kind of have to have like a structure if you are um like competing in that aspect but if you're just this like average person like just journal journal write down the weights that you're doing every single week um write down how you're feeling if you're super sore because and that's another thing, like you're the goal of exercising, like you shouldn't be sore after every workout. Like if soreness is like, is not relative to a good workout. Preach. That should also be on a t-shirt. Yeah. That should be printed on a gym bag, all the walls. You yeah. Know? It's also crazy how your training and recovery changes when your mindset around why you're training changes. Like mm-hmm. when I was doing bodybuilding, you know, I would go to the gym like two, three times a day, work out for hours on end. And essentially, like, associate my, like, how well my workout was based on how many calories my Fitbit mm-hmm. told me I burned and how sore I was. And, like, I didn't care about how functional the movements were that I was doing or I didn't care about range of motion or anything. And now, being so much wiser and older and more mature, <laughs> I, like, now I just train to have fun. Like, of course, yeah. I still have, like, my own strength-based goals mm-hmm. and, like, aesthetic-based goals, but... I train now because it's so fun to be able to move my body and be like, fuck yeah, I just snatched, like, I just fucking snatched. (laughs) I just fucking snatched, man. Like, (laughs) it's so, like, empowering to be able to, like, throw around weights and also throw around, like, your body weight and, like, do handstands and, like, all these fun things. Like, the body is meant to move and it's so cool to see, like, what it can actually do when you start kind of shifting your perspective of why you're training. Exactly. And, like, my range of motion has gotten so much better. It's still trash. If you know me, you know that my body is a hot garbage (laughs) can (laughs) rolling down a hill. Like, it's, I fucked my body up for years, and now I'm, like, a fucking 25-year-old with a broken back, like, every (laughs) single Anyways, I still love training. (laughs) Anyways, but, like, it's crazy how, like, I literally, I was telling Gabby this morning that I took a whole week off from the gym. Yeah. Like, today was my first day back, and last Tuesday was my last day at the gym, and, like, old me would have fucking lost my mind because I didn't train every single day, so, like, how was I supposed to eat food? Mm Because my mindset was, like, I need to earn my food, which is ridiculous. Yes. Um... And hold on. that was your old mindset? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I was like, hold on, you were thinking that last week? Girl. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no. Ma'am? <laughs> no. no, that was like my old mindset. Yeah, yeah, now yeah. it's like, I have such a good understanding of everything that my body does outside of exercise that requires food that mm-hmm. now it's like, oh, if I don't work out for a week, it's not like I'm necessarily going to drop my calories because I'm not exercising as much. Yeah. It's just like I'm going to eat until I feel content. Mm-hmm. And I my body just needed more rest. Like, yeah. And sometimes less is more. Like what you need to listen your to your body. Your body is like your best friend when it comes to just learning how to listen to it because it gives you the cues of like when you're hungry, whenever you need a rest. Like if you're exhausted, don't go to the gym and like be like, I just need to grind it out and the grind and all this stuff. Like that's not, you're, you're basically contradicting everything because it's like if your body needs to rest, then give it a rest and then train hard the next day. You know, you're not going to build muscle or get the progress that you want if you're not allowing yourself to recover in the proper ways. So, and yeah. especially too, if you're hungry, like eat when your body is hungry, your body is telling you like, I need some fuel. But see, that's a really hard thing with like nowadays with food and stuff is because a lot of foods have, 
you know, like additive ingredients that are chemically designed to essentially like confuse our hunger hormones. Mm-hmm. And we as humans just downregulate the fuck out of our hunger hormones all the time. So like if we took the time to learn about our hunger hormones and approach hunger from a place of compassion and curiosity, Mm -hmm. then we can over time get back in tune with those hunger hormones and actually understand like, I'm at the point where I can tell when my body needs protein, when it needs carbs, when it needs fats, when it needs vegetables, because I've spent fucking four plus years trying (laughs) educating myself and trying to listen to my body and learn how to fix my hormones. And like, so people you know, who, like, want to intuitively eat or, like, listen to their body, like, it's great, and they should, but they also need to realize that if they've been eating, like, lots of processed foods, not eating breakfast, using mm-hmm. caffeine as a as a food group, um, <laughs> like myself when I was younger, um, or things like that, or just doing things that constantly suppress their hunger hormones, mm-hmm. then you can't expect to be able to do that right away. Like, you have to build up to it. You have to start bringing awareness to behavioral and eating habits yeah. and training habits as mm-hmm. well. Like, um, it's crazy how how much just understanding you can have when you change your mindset from fixed to growth mindset. Mm-hmm. And just, like, once again, coming from a place of just curiosity. Like, why am I feeling so sore? Like, what? Yeah. Like, audit your week. Like, how was your training? How was your sleep? How, how was, was your, your hydration? digestive yeah. system? How was your digestive system? Like, all this stuff. And your body literally gives you all the fucking answers that you need to live the best and feel the best. Mm-hmm. But we just overcomplicate it. And we also just live in an, an environment now where, like, food is so readily available. Everything is hyper palatable. It's so easy to overeat nowadays or even undereat. Like, it's just, yeah. it's just we need to – I'm a big believer that you wouldn't have to count calories or macros if you spend the time learning how to – understand your hunger hormones so that you eat when you're hungry and you stop when you're content and also like how each macronutrient like physiologically works in your body like what does protein do what does fat do what do carbs do um and understanding those i think will help you like for example if your digestive system is all messed up like maybe you need a little bit more fat maybe you need actually more calories because you're not actually eating enough so your gastric emptying is slowed down you know so like those little things too or actually it's just your fucking mindset yeah (laughs) no seriously Seriously. all those cortisol levels if you're like constantly stressed about what you're eating oh i need to go to the gym every day you're exhausted you're still going to the gym you're raising those cortisol levels and then it's just contradicting all of your progress so yeah so for those who don't know when we so our gut and brain is very easily connected and actually our gut interprets a lot of the emotions that our brain feels Mm -hmm. um and so when we get super stressed out when eating or after eating whether it's around food or just something happens your body drives these hormone responses as a crf i'm not going to try and say that word so just look it up it's a molecule um but it's a crf (laughs) molecule and it's like responsible for stimulating that like stress stress response Mm -hmm. but so when we get stressed out like the body is a very smart and very adaptive system. And so when we get stressed out, your body turns into the, or it turns on essentially your sympathetic nervous system, which is like the fight or flight, it's the adrenaline response. It's how our body essentially assesses whatever the threat is. Mm -hmm. And so our body has to figure out like, why are we feeling these emotions? Is it like a perceived threat, like something internal? Is it like actually someone's trying to hit us? Like, do we need to run away? Like, do we need to fight? Like the body responds in the same way to threat stimulus and so what happens when like we get that threat is like I said our sympathetic nervous system kind of gets stimulated so that CRF is released the stress hormones are released and because the body is so smart and adaptive it actually like essentially assesses what systems in the body can be turned off or slowed down to conserve energy because the body's like oh shit, like if we have to fight a bear, Mm -hmm. we're going to have to take a lot of energy to last that bear for survival. Yeah. Um, (laughs) Let's put, let's, let's paint a picture for you. You and this bear are are fucking throwing hands and you got to survive. So like your body starts shutting off like your sex hormone regulations, like your digestive system. So your gastric juices like actually stop working, your intestines stop 
um, essentially like the motility of them stop, like everything in your digestive system stops working. So now that food Mm -hmm. that you were digesting is just sitting there. Yeah. And so that prevents like nutrient absorption. It prevents, um, obviously like digesting it, things like that. And then also when this is going on, like your intestines are actually like secreting out juices into your body as well. And so like, this is why it's so important that when you're trying to go into dieting or when you're trying to go into intuitive eating or even with like physical training, like Mm -hmm. you have to have a good mindset around it because you may not think that what you're thinking affects your body, but seriously, like your thoughts and your brain and gut connection Mm -hmm. are so strong. Um, and it's just so like mind blowing how strong of a connection it is. So that mindset around like, if you naturally think positive thoughts, like positive things are going to come into your life. And it's, it's the exact same thing. If you, you can feel energy. So if you're around someone that's constantly negative, you don't want to be around them. (laughs) So you're, they're naturally going to not attract good energy. It's going to be negative. But if you know that person who is positive and just fun and always has a positive mindset, like they're going to attract good things into their life, you know? So how did I attract you into my life <laughs> with my dark little brain? Uh, I don't know. We're going to get serious now. So okay. Natalie, yes, tell us how you implement progressive overload. That's a great question. So <laughs> thank, thank you, you for next. asking that question. <laughs> I don't want to answer it. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, so the gym that I... Uh, go to and also coach at is Frontline Coalition and it's like a half normal like bodybuilding gym and then other half is like a CrossFit gym and so with the CrossFit gym since I am a little CrossFit groupie um, (laughs) uh, we have in-house programming so another coach programs all the workouts for the week and Mm -hmm. he incorporates progressive overload into the strength portion so like our workouts they're an hour long 15 minutes is like dedicated to warming up, 15, 20 minutes. And then we have a strength portion. And then after the strength portion, we go into what's called metabolic conditioning um, or like Metcons and stuff. And that's kind yeah. of like the cardio weight aspect of CrossFit that everybody sees. And so what I really like is sometimes like CrossFit gets a bad rep because you can't like make progress in it or you can't implement progressive overload, but you can. Mm-hmm. Um, you just kind of have to be a little like strategic about it. And like Gabby said, like write down things, like keep track of stuff. So next week when, you know, a similar workup pops up or the same strength pops up or things like that, like you can implement your own progressive overload depending on what your goals are. But so with me, like we're, I think right now we're on a deadlift um, progressive overload. Is it like, um, do they do that in like blocks, like weeks? So like you have like deadlifts for a mm-hmm. X amount of weeks and then you guys mm-hmm. do like percentages or yeah. how does that work? Yeah. So we do percentages and I'm personally a really big fan of percentages. Mm-hmm. I think percentages are great, not only for progress and tracking progress, but also as like ways for understanding your body. Cause trust me, there are definitely some days when like it says, you know, we're doing, um, five, uh, five sets of five reps. Five percent. We're doing five (laughs) percent. No, like we're doing like a five by five back squat at like 70%. And 70% should be pretty movable for that amount of rest. But there's definitely Mm -hmm. been some times where like, I feel that 70% on like, what the fuck? Why is this so heavy? (laughs) Yeah. Who messed with gravity? Like what is going on? Why am I only getting two reps? Like, and so I feel like that's a really good, like percentages also provide a really good biofeedback for you on like, okay, like, how once again coming from a place of curiosity and like auditing like why does this feel so fucking heavy Mm -hmm. and then like reflecting like how did I eat yesterday have I eaten today Mm -hmm. um how was my sleep like how how am I feeling and then that kind of helps you identify like what you need to work on outside of the gym so Mm -hmm. that when that 70% comes back up you fucking crush it and not let it crush you yeah exactly (laughs) and like you said like writing stuff down is so important because sometimes you can just do something one day and it doesn't even like recollect with you the next day whenever you're trying to audit yourself. So you need that like written information of like how your training program is going. What did I eat in the day? How did I feel after each meal? Like how was my digestive system after each meal? Did I feel good? Did I feel bad? Um, All those little objective data points are going to help you like build a good program that's for you you know there's no perfect program for anyone but the one that works for you because everybody's body is physiologically different everyone reacts differently to training some people are just have a genetic crazy treth treth what (laughs) threshold (laughs) threshold (laughs) threshold (laughs) threshold of course it's another threshold (laughs) a genetic threshold where it's just like they 
are like limitless, like the one percenters that are like in an NFL, whereas like an average Joe, maybe we're not average Joes though. I feel like my training is pretty average right now. Like it's, so I used to like work out you like four times a week would be two days. And then Mm -hmm. like, I'd run like 13 miles a week and train (laughs) like six days. And then I'm in a point in my life right now where all that extra exercise is not my priority. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of been hard to digest because I don't feel as fit as I usually am. Mm -hmm. Um, But, like, realistically, like, I get an hour for the gym every day. Yeah. And that, or, like, five to six days a week, every day. And for me right now with where I am in life and where my current goals are, that's enough. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I really want people to understand is it's okay for your goals to shift and your perceived level of effort to also shift Mm -hmm. with those goals. Like, being realistic – I can't, like, when I was doing all that extra training and stuff, like, I had, like, a set job where I worked, like, 40 hours a week, and it was a set schedule, and I always knew when I had to be there, so I could Mm -hmm. incorporate, like, my training around it. Um, I wasn't in school, like, I didn't have, like, I had a lot of free time, so I filled that free time with, like, extra training and, like, really pushing myself, and was it fun to be that fit and have, like, that visible of abs and stuff? (laughs) Yeah, it was, but, like, I would probably write myself, like, an honestly like a seven or an eight out of ten when I was doing that like not Mm -hmm. even a full ten out of ten um and then now I'm probably at like a fucking three yeah because like I said I just that hour that I dedicate to myself for the gym five to six days a week is just more like my stress relief Mm -hmm. like my you know if I get progress in the gym great like I'm still aiming for it but it's like unfortunately it's not my number one priority like I work like (laughs) probably 50 to 60 hours a week now Mm -hmm. um I don't really have a very consistent schedule like I never really know when things are going to happen days Mm -hmm. change so it's like if I have the opportunity to add in more training yeah I would love to because I like I have so much fun exercising Mm -hmm. but what's all about like different seasons of your life like now is like it's such a big shift in your life because one you just like started to learn how to like run your own business you know you've never done that that's awesome and, like, you have, like, clients that you want to take care of. And, like, it's just your priority has shifted. Like, same thing with me. I have school full-time. Like, school is a crap ton. I can't even work full-time. I do posing clients, which gives me, like, pretty good income. But it's not, like, working 40 hours a week. So it's, like, we have to dedicate our time to um, specific things that are important to us in this season of our life. And, and it, it doesn't have to be going to the gym and lifting weights. Like any movement is great going for a walk every day. Like Mm -hmm. even getting exposure to the sunlight and walking maybe a quarter of a mile more every day, like that's going to like boost your mental health. And also like, it's good for your cardiovascular health and your health overall. You don't have to. It's also good for your circadian rhythm. Yeah. And digestive system. (laughs) And also, (laughs) and also just fucking walk people. Like you, you know, I feel like people dedicate so much to their training, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. But then like, let's say they're awake for 13 hours a day and they only work out for one, or I shouldn't say only, but they work out for one hour a day. Uh Awesome. Great. Love that for you. But then the tw- <laughs> love that for you, you little. <laughs> but then the other twelve hours, if you're just sitting down, like yeah. you, you're not, you're not gonna reach your goals as efficiently. You're not gonna like. We need to. Our bodies are meant to stay active. Mm-hmm. We're not meant to be sedentary. Like, um, you know, kind of how Gabby said, like it all comes down to your priorities of like what is important to you and how you can realistically, consistently fit mm-hmm. it into your life like consistently yeah that's the fucking keyword <laughs> that's the <laughs> that's, keyword. that's the main keyword <laughs> today of consistency um and so like it's figuring out like how can you make your goals work in yeah. a different season and so like because my gym time has decreased i now only stand when i work I mean, should I be standing for a full day? I don't really know. But, like, I stand, like, I have a standing desk. I didn't even buy a chair because I was like, I don't want to sit. Yeah. I want to increase my, like, essentially activity level. We actually do tend to, like, utilize more muscle and burn more calories standing than sitting. So, like, Mm -hmm. for me, like, that small change, yeah, it took a little bit of getting used to. Like, at the beginning, like, at first, my feet were super sore. (laughs) But I it's still better. have bruises on my feet, and I may have um, calluses and bunions, but but it's fine. And then, like, also, you know, just incorporating more walks now. Like, I try and – I can fit in 
frequent five minute walks throughout the day like yeah it may not seem like much to just walk for five minutes outside but if I do that three four times a day that Mm -hmm. adds up and that's what matters and so it's like you have to be realistic with what sacrifices you're willing to make to get the goals that you want and a lot of times people are like oh yeah like I'm trying so hard I'm doing everything and I'm not getting my goals but it's like yeah it's like okay but like and that's the hardest part is we don't like to be super transparent with ourselves about the level of effort we're putting into whatever our goals mm-hmm. are, whether that's fitness, nutrition, sleep, business, like whatever it may be. Mm-hmm. It's just you have to be that's that's the thing is it's once again circling back to mindset. It's your mindset about your own abilities that you're putting towards your goals that's holding you back from your mm-hmm. goals. And all those like even if it's a smallest change, like those smallest changes over time will allow you to reach that bigger goal. A lot of times we kind of set this big goal for us ourselves and we look at this huge goal and there's so many different steps to get there, but it's like it's overwhelming for us so we don't do anything at all, you know? So it's like you need to break it down, break it down into small achievable goals and do those every single day and eventually you'll get there yeah like whether you're taking big steps or small steps you're still going to get to the end Mm -hmm. goal but what is more consistent for you to do Mm -hmm. and so like same thing with like training programs and stuff like it can be really exciting and really sexy to like (laughs) get a training program and like get in that mindset like yeah I'm gonna fucking train like two times a day and I'm gonna do cardio every day I'm gonna blah 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 but it's like, did you actually assess, like, where you can fit that into your current routine? Yeah. Um, and at the end of the day, like, I'm a big believer that we only get one life. And so everything you do, you should enjoy it. You know, I mean, yes, there are seasons of, like, time where it's a little bit harder and it's a little bit more, like, mentally yeah. tough or things like that. Yeah, that's great. That builds resiliency. But at, at the end of the day, like, when you're dead, if people at your funeral are talking about, like how skinny you were, how shredded you were. She really was skinny. Oh, what? <laughs> or like your back squat and stuff. Like, okay, first off, you've got a weird friend group. Yeah. Um, and two, like people realistically, they're not going to be talking about that. They're going to be talking about how like all the memories they had with you and like yeah. how you made them feel. And like, even if those memories they're bringing up are around the gym and like maxing on the back squats with you, it's not because of the strength that you had. Mm-hmm. It's because of how you made that person feel and how you made that experience for them. Like mm-hmm. you don't create memories with people because like you both PR'd at the, like, you know, <laughs> like, I mean, maybe, but like, you, you get what I'm saying? Yeah, no, like, I definitely understand. I believe life should be enjoyable. And yeah. so you need to find a training program for you that is enjoyable at least most of the time like yeah. realistically are you going to enjoy training every single day no mm-hmm. i mean if you do props to you i know hit There's me up and days. tell me what your secret is <laughs> <laughs> but like it should be fun like that's how you're going to have the most consistency when it comes to training is finding mm-hmm. a program that like you actually look forward to doing and having fun with we kind of wrap up this episode um since this whole series is to help you build your perfect program we're going to give some tips and recommendations of how to do just that with progressive overload so I'll talk about what I would recommend and then Gabby will talk about what she recommends Mm -hmm. but so basically if you're wanting to start implementing progressive overload into your own training split first thing is first look at your schedule figure out how many times can you actually go to the gym consistently and then base it around that if you can do a three-day split cool awesome then it's kind of time to figure out like do you prefer to do like you know, push pull days or upper body, lower body, full body day. Like you got to kind of figure out what you enjoy doing or do you like to just focus on the max, like the main list? Like one day is dedicated to squats and then all the accessory work. One day is dedicated to bench and all the upper body accessory work. And then one day is dedicated to deadlift and once again, all the accessory work. So if you got to figure out what training split you like. And then once you figure it out, I recommend maxing out on all the li- like not obviously all one day. maxing out every day of your life. <laughs> Get full. <laughs> no, but like max out on the list that you're wanting to improve on if this is for strength related things. Mm-hmm. Like let's say you want to improve your squat and you know deadlift and bench. Then each day or each day that you're training, so let's say if you're doing that three day training split, then one day dedicate to maxing out to squat, have a rest day in between, another day of maxing out to deadlift, a rest day or two in between, and then mm-hmm. you know bench. Actually, I'd probably recommend doing, like, squat and then bench and then deadlift. Yeah, your um, legs It's are very taxing on the system to max out. But And then uh, figure out what your one rep max is so then you can move into percentages. Mm-hmm. And so then start, like, your first training block. Like, if you're completely building this from scratch and you're not getting, you know, help or a program structure or stuff like that, once you have your one rep max, then, you know, maybe start with, like, um, like five by five on squat, bench, and deadlift at 65%. 
or whatever, you know, it was a pretty easy moving, movable weight for you. And then next week, you know, up that percentage by, you know, anywhere from two to five based on how it felt like two to 5%. So let's say last week you did 60%. The next week you do the same reps and sets and movements, but now you're at 65%. And then the next week, 70%. And then let's say that 70% was pretty hard. Maybe spend another week in that 70%. And then the following week up it to 75 and so forth and so on until you get to about like 90% and then give yourself a few days off and then retest your one rep maxes again and see if you progress. So that's how I would go about building progressive overload mm-hmm. for strength. Um, Gibbs? Yeah, I think if that's overwhelming for you, for I think a lot of people like first getting into fitness, it can be overwhelming. Like, I don't know how to max. Like if you don't have like the proper, um, the form, then I would just say like start by like just going in the gym, doing even just machines, like writing down the weight that you do on the machine and write down the amount of time that you took to break in between each set and next week take a little bit less less of a break do a little bit more on that machine like just make it simple for yourself so where it's like not super overwhelming and then once you get more confident with that you can go into the gym and do a max squat do a max um bench or deadlift whatever it is that way it's not super overwhelming if you are first starting out um and then two like you don't have to just go and do weights like if your goal is for cardio like start doing your times on cardio you can see if you can get a mile faster or if you're doing sprint intervals like if you're taking take less of a break in between your intervals and that's just going to tax progressively overload your endurance system rather than um inducing like hypertrophy yeah or like if you're doing running and stuff and you're utilizing the treadmill like increase the incline things mm-hmm. like that um, yeah, my example is definitely more for people who, like, are experienced in weightlifting and yeah. want to get stronger. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, like what Gabby said, it can be really scary to start out the g- to start out at the gym. Mm-hmm. And I know that this is a lot easier said than done, but just remind yourself, if someone's judging you, that's their own goddamn problem, and you shouldn't let it affect you. And like I said, mm-hmm. I know that's a lot easier said than done, but you're there to better yourself, and if someone is there giving you a hard time or making you feel uncomfortable then that's their own problem. And at the end of the day, like, a lot of people at the gym, like, are there to support each other, I feel. If you find, like, a good gym, like, people are there to help you. Like, if you have questions, don't be afraid to ask someone, like, hey, how do you, like, use this machine? Hey, um, you look awesome today. Like, I saw you lifting. You look great. Like, can you give me a couple tips, you know? Like, people are more than willing to give you tips and to help you. Yeah, and, like, um... I know, like, in today's day and age right now, like, a lot of guys are getting shit on social media for, like, watching girls work out and stuff, and it's, like, you have the power to let what other people do affect you. So, like, if someone is staring at you at the gym, you can either tell yourself, like, they're probably staring at me because I look fucking good today, or they're staring at me because I'm strong as fuck and they're impressed, or you can have the mindset of, like, oh, they're probably staring at me because I'm doing something wrong or because they think I look funny. Like, you don't know what they're thinking, and sometimes people, like, I've been caught fucking staring at people, but I'm just, I'm just dazed, like, I'm just Girl, dazed it's out. me. I'm the problem. <laughs> it's me. A lot of people have uh, been getting some shade on Instagram. <laughs> no, like, there's times when I'm just, like, zoned out and I'm thinking about, like, my next lift, and, like, you may be in my eye gaze, I can't, like, but I'm, I'm Not, just Not, like, zoned. judging yeah. or anything like that. Yeah. Or, like, you know, a lot of people when they're in the gym, especially women, tend to have like resting bitch face yeah and I think that's kind of like as a defensive mechanism of being in the gym and like being like stared at and stuff like that and so if you see someone's resting bitch face chances of them actually having that face towards you is not slim like or is slim what I don't know I got confused (laughs) I confused myself it's slim if it's it's, if it's directed towards you yeah and you know kind of like I said like you if they're not verbally telling you negative things and you're just getting in your head about, like, why people are staring at you, make it a positive thing. Fucking be your own cheerleader. Hype yourself Mm -hmm. up. Other things to help with getting into the gym first is, like, going with a friend. Mm -hmm. You know, going with a buddy. That makes it so much easier. Um, Making a really bomb playlist that you look forward to working out to can make it awesome. And then something that I recommend for people who may have, like, gym anxiety about working out and starting it, just go to the gym, get on the treadmill, and mm-hmm. walk for three to five minutes. Yeah. If after three to five minutes, you still want to go home, you still, you're still you still anxious, okay, go home. But chances are that anxiety is going to go away because you already started the workout. Mm-hmm. You already started it. 
you took the first few steps. No, I definitely, I think that's something that I implement too. Like sometimes I go into the gym with not even a plan and I'll just go on like either the um, bike or I'll go on the treadmill and kind of just get some movement in and my blood flow in and kind of think about what I'm going to do before I actually work out. Mm -hmm. Um, Especially in like a very crowded gym. I feel like no matter how experienced you are, at least for me, I think I'm always like, ugh, the gym is so crowded. Like I don't want to be around people right now and like having to wait for equipment and stuff like that it still like induces anxiety so I can't imagine like even just like barely starting working out and going to the gym like how you feel so don't feel alone because like Natalie said like people are there to better themselves go with a friend um go in like a corner and just bring yourself some dumbbells in that corner you can you'd be so surprised with how good of a workout you can get with just a dumbbell or even just body weight yeah Yeah, it doesn't always have to be, um, like, super heavy resistance training or stuff like that. Like, any body weight is a form of resistant training, and, you know, just moving your body, you're going to receive benefits. So, it's, you know, and some people who don't like the gym, okay, cool, like, go try out Pilates classes, go try out, um, what's that cardio class? Orange Theory. (laughs) Like, go try out, like, F45, come try CrossFit, we have cookies. Like... (laughs) You know, just, fit, like, try a bunch. Like, life's too short to not explore what your body can do. Yeah. yeah. And you never know if, like, you won't like it. Like, Natalie used to hate on CrossFit, and now she's like, I love CrossFit. Oh, yeah. I drank the juice, and, yeah. I, and I ate the chalk, and now I'm, now I'm in the cold. <laughs> um, but, yeah, and so just, you know, kind of going back, like, life's too short to care what other people think of you. You got to mm-hmm. do what makes you happy. And even if that means, like, failing your one rep max at the gym when you're testing it, like, who fucking cares? Yeah. You showed up for yourself and you tried. So if people have a problem with that, give them the middle finger. And everybody (laughs) fails. That's how you get to, like, where you are, you know? Like, everybody fails. You shouldn't be something that you're embarrassed of. And it's just, like, it's ingrained in our head just because we see social media and all this stuff. Like, everyone only posts whenever they're doing good and whenever they are successful. They never post, like, those bad things or whenever they are failing. So just remember, like, social media is just a snippet of someone's life. Think about what you post on Instagram versus, like, what your reality is, you know? Oh, yeah. Like, (laughs) all all my posts on Instagram are relatively positive. And little do you guys know, I have, like, five mental breakdowns a week. (laughs) Ask Gabby, oh, she knows. Yeah. We, text we just text each other. We're like, hey, how's your day? And you're like, um, it was good. I did this. Mental breakdown. Did this again. I'm like, oh my God, same. <laughs> like, I've never <laughs> cried so much in my life before. <laughs> And it's annoying because, so like, true. I'll just be sitting there and I'll just start crying. I'm like, why the oh fuck is fucking crying? <laughs> Literally, how it is, though. You just F. need a good cry, though. If you need to cry, you freaking cry. Well, um, this was progressive overload. <laughs> 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 um, but if you guys did enjoy this episode, go ahead and give us a follow if you like it. Or you can rate us. We five really stars. <laughs> five stars only. <laughs> if you don't, well, we will find you. Okay. <laughs> But yeah, please uh, give us five stars. I don't really know what that does, but yeah. apparently it helps us. <laughs> and follow us and download it. Yeah, you can follow us on Instagram. You can download it. We should have said this at the beginning, but um, anything that we do say is just for educational purposes. So just, yeah, I think we need to. We're keep... here for shits and gigs with some educational things sprinkled in. Yeah. So um, do with this information at your own will. Mm-hmm. We are not responsible for what you choose to do based off what we said. <laughs> We're rambling, so toodaloo's. See you next Saturday.